everybody. I'm your pottery professor and it's March 23rd, 2020 and I'm coming to you from the studios uh, at Virginia Wesleyan University um, where I'm alone in the studio today. None of my students are here. They've all been sent home due to the spread of COVID-19. I regularly teach about 60 students each semester and uh, let's see, um, I've never made a YouTube video before, uh, except for the one I made about five minutes ago that was a total choke, and I threw it away and made some cue cards so I could do this again. Um, uh, I've never taught an online course to, uh, before. I've never taught remotely uh, to 60 students, uh, four classes, uh, but I'm gonna do my best. Um, we're gonna get this done, and I'm a can-do kind of person, and uh, you'll see that in the videos you come uh, and watch. Hopefully you'll, you'll stay around and watch. Uh, so um, as I uh, finish up the next seven, eight weeks of this semester remotely, I'll be posting more videos. I hope you'll come and watch and follow these. Maybe subscribe to my uh, channel. Um, let me know what you think of them. Um, and uh, I'll try to make some good Good things for you to watch, um, both techniques on how to do things, but also things for students you could just kind of watch as a class participation thing, demonstration that I would normally do, um, and make those go along with some of the assignments that I have. Um, let's see, uh, checking my cue cards here, <laughs> trying to keep myself prompted. Before we get started with any of the projects, techniques that I wanted to do, um, I, I want you to take some inventory and some of the things you may um, want to have and may be helpful um, for my students to get finished uh, with this semester. Um, so um, I'm going to send you on a little scavenger hunt around the house. Um, maybe you can gather some of these things together. Hopefully you have some things um, and some of the tools uh, that you um, had in the class. Um, before folks went home for spring break, um, I hope people e heeded my warnings um, and my cries to take clay home with you and take tools home with you so that you would have something to do in the event that this happened. Uh, um, I believe all the faculty here and even across our whole country knew uh, it was going this way in a very short amount of time. And so we are all trying to do the best we can. Um, we do care very much about our students. Um, and so, uh, we're going to get this done and we're going to make it through it. Um, what I want you to do is uh, look around and um, I'm going to show you some of these things. Look around your house, um, improvise where you can, be creative. It's kind of like uh, you're going to go into the back of your freezer and find something to cook with that night um, and maybe something else from the back of your closet. You've got to be creative at this point in time. You might not have everything that you want. We're going to do it and uh, uh, you have something and that kind of attitude is what can get us through. Work with what you have, um, be creative, um, and I hope you learn something and have some fun doing it too. So um, before break, spring break, um, I had asked students to at least grab a block of clay to take with them as a just in case, put it in your backpack. I hope you have done that. Uh, my student workers and I made up these little four or five pound blocks of clay for you to take. Uh, that would be awesome if you have it. Um, maybe uh, if you uh, have to come back to clean out your dorm room. I know Residence Life um, is having students set up appointments so there's not large gatherings of people in that. Um, you have to file a form online that would have been mailed to you. Um, if you didn't bring clay home, you can probably still get some if you come to campus. Today I came in, the building is open, so you could actually come to campus. I have clay out for you inside the ceramics room for you to come and pick up. You can pick up the small one, or you probably have your 25 pound block of clay that I gave you at the beginning of the semester. Now you might have used about half of it by now, we've been half a semester. So that's actually perfect. That's what you're going to need to finish up with. Um, maybe. I, I think probably like about 10, if this is 4 pounds, 8 to 10 pounds. Two of these will probably get you through what we need to do. Um, if you're really in a pinch, you, you don't have any clay with you, um, 
it's possible you could go online and order some of this air dry clay. You could actually order regular clay off of the internet um, through either clay distributors, uh, you could do Google searches, um, some kind of search for it. Uh, you might even find someone local. Perhaps if you live in Norfolk area, Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, um, there are places like uh, on the boulevard, there's Jerry's Artorama, although I did get a notice from a student that they were starting to run low on clay. Surprising to have a run on clay during a uh, pandemic. Um, but uh, you could also check out All Hands Pottery Studio. It's on Military Highway in Norfolk and Angie there. Uh, you could call first, see if she has clay and she is distributing clay. Um, set up an appointment possibly, uh, another small business to keep going. So if you can help them out, that would be good. Um, the other possibility is from one of your box stores. Um, this you can't fire and we may not be firing anything that you make this semester. We might, if you can actually preserve it and keep it uh, from breaking and bring it back, I'll, I'll do what I can to fire it for you. If you made it and you want it, I'll help you out. We're, we're gonna do this. Um, if really this is just a pinch to finish up the projects that you're going to do this semester, um, you could do it with this air dry clay. It uh, comes from, well I bought this from Walmart, um, about $5.80 and it's two and a half pounds, but it's a pretty good sized tub. Maybe two of these would be enough. You might even be able to get by with one. It depends how big you make your projects. But um, this is only two and a half pounds, so it's lighter than regular clay. It's kind of weird stuff. I haven't worked with it much before. I have used it with some children projects before. I would suggest getting a light colored one. This is kind of white, um, and that way you're not making too much um, of a mess with the, possibly the terracotta color, which is a bit darker, um, has more of a uh, brown color to it. But uh, this should be able to do it in a pinch. If you don't have regular clay, if you're not gonna be coming back to campus to pick stuff up, and Clay is going to be essential. Let's make sure you have some clay or else um, all this isn't going to be helpful. Um, it would really be nice to have your pottery toolkit, um, a sponge, maybe even a, 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 a sea wool sponge, an elfin ear sponge, a small one like I have here. But these are actually good. Um, they'll get you through the rest of the semester if you have your pottery toolkit. Um, also in that, you know, one of your metal scrapers that came with the toolkit. Uh, a needle tool would be nice. Your clay knife, especially if you're gonna be working maybe on your kitchen table, you don't wanna use your needle tool to say cut slabs or anything on your kitchen table uh, because it's gonna scratch the table up. So maybe the wooden knife would be better and be better to put something down. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, your trim tools would be helpful. Wooden rib would be helpful. Your wire tool, if you don't have a wire tool, you could have some string. That's one of the things you might be able to find around. You got a kite out in the garage or in the closet, um, or you know, just some even. Well, yeah, I don't think thread will work, but some regular string will do it. Um, help you cut your clay if you want to cut it. Um, it really would have been nice if you had bought one of the blue uh, Kemper um, finishing kidneys. Uh, these rubber blue rubber kidneys are nice. They sell them in the bookstore. Hopefully, you got one. Um, if you had not bought one then you know, this scraper will be helpful. Um, if not, you might find some stuff around your kitchen. Just uh, make sure you ask first before you start going and taking things. Um, I have one of these little scrapers that I really like, and it came from uh, Pampered Chef. Um, they use them for scraping their stoneware baking um, pieces, and it, it's actually a really good rib to have when I work on the wheel, but also I use it in hand building some. It's kind of fun. I picked this one up for a couple bucks at Walmart in the kitchen section. So if you look in the kitchen section, you might find some things you could use. Having some kind of knife to cut your clay might be nice. You could use a kitchen knife. A uh, fettling knife is awesome to have. Um, these are made for cutting clay. And some other tools you might have around the kitchen. Vegetable peelers can be very useful. Um, both for like, you know, shaving down uh, either the rim or even uh, other parts of the clay. Um, and then they've got this little point where you can actually gouge and carve, which is kind of cool. And this one's neat because it has little textures on it. Textures are nice. So look for things, tools that have textures on it. You might 
use it for putting texture into your work in some areas. It's kind of cool. Um, and these can all be cleaned after you use them. Uh, this one's a little rusty because it's been in my toolkit for a while. Um, hard to find these. Sometimes you can find these little vegetable peelers that have the little straight blade, but I've used it for carving the rims of bowls and, and things like that. And, and it's kind of cool how it shapes it. And this one has a little um, grater on it that you could use like a sure form rasp and, and rasp on it. Um, and it would leave some cool textures too. So again, uh, look for different things. You might want a ruler. It's nice to have a little ruler, a school ruler, or something like that. It doesn't have to be anything uh, too big. Or just even a straight edge um, will work good for you. You'll need a straight edge at some point. Um, you've got spoons, I'm sure, in the kitchen. And we use those um, all different ways. And you, you could use them on your clay when you're working to help you with your projects. Even wooden spoons um, work really good for different uh, things. You've got to try stuff out. Maybe even a fork where you could use the tines for putting the textures. You could also use that as a scoring tool. Um, instead of a needle tool for a scoring tool, you could actually get four score marks in one stroke with a handy fork. Maybe you have some popsicles in the freezer, uh, laying the back there. <laughs> and um, you could use a popsicle stick, uh, that could be useful for some things, you know, putting coils together and things, or tongue depressors if you have any stuff like that. Um, so, you know, take a look around, see what you have. Maybe for rolling out slabs, uh, you've got one of these. This is called a pony roller or um, Pampered Chef. I believe this is a Pampered Chef model where you, you know, you can roll out pie crusts and things like that. Um, you know, biscuit dough that you're gonna, and cookie dough and stuff that you're gonna punch. Um, so if you need a way to roll out a slab, this could actually work in a pinch, it might help you out. I've got some other ways I want to show you. Um, hopefully, you might have a um, rolling pin inside your kitchen, um, but possibly not. Not everybody does uh, cook that much. Um, and I, you know, I can't ever remember making a pie crust myself uh, with a rolling pin, which is what you'd likely use it for. Um, but if you got one, sure would be nice to have. If you don't, maybe something you know at home, in the garage, the work shed has some PVC pipe. Um, that could be used as a roller, it could be used for other things too. And uh, if you've gone through some of your paper towel supply and saved the um, centers, um, you could put that on the PVC and roll with that. And it probably wouldn't stick to this surface that much, the clay. We're gonna try that out in a little while. Sure would be nice if you had a piece of canvas or an old, you know, kind of cloth that is smooth and the thicker the better actually, but uh, it might be good to have something like this to work on um, if you're going to be working inside your house. Um, you know, I like to work outside my garage. I don't work inside of the kitchen table, but I might actually do one of my demonstrations soon coming from my own kitchen just to kind of simulate what you might be going through right now. Um, and uh, uh, use some of the tools that I found inside the drawer. I'll clean them real good when I've done with them though. If you've got some cloth or something like that, look for it. It should be kind of smooth though. You don't want anything like a towel that has a lot of texture. You could work on something like that, but just to protect the surface, but you might want something smooth on top of that. Um, especially if you're gonna roll out a slab, um, which would be nice to do, uh, to do some of these projects. Um, some other tools you might not have around the house, but I wanted to show them to you. This is kind of a serrated edge tool, and it's really good for scoring and putting in textures. And I have another one that looks just like the flexible scraper, but it has little teeth on it all the way around. And that's great for scoring and also texturing. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Brad from graduate school, used to use this hardware cloth and cut it with a pair of shears or scissors and it would let, let all those tines stick out. That's an excellent scoring tool. Sometimes these things will poke you in the hand though, so if you take some masking tape wrap around your handle and it works really nice, kind of fun. Um, I found this old spring in the garage and uh, that could be really cool. If you roll it across your slab, you can get some neat textures from the spring. Um, you might have some like scrapbooking stamps, and I have some here. 
these just little stamps that you know rubber stamps that you would use for things and they could put textures into your clay you could make stamps but this one uh, was made out of clay and then bisquired um, and I put some textures in it before it bisquired it you could press the stamps that you make um, into clay it would probably work if you just made your stamp and textures out of your clay and just let it air dry till it's um, bone dry because um, you know bone dry clay doesn't want to stick to wet clay so stamping into it you'd probably be okay for a little while until that bone dry clay soaked up some moisture and it would deteriorate probably quickly if you could bisfire it would be even better but you don't have a kiln at home uh, well most of my students don't um, I wouldn't expect them to um, I found this neat bolt that had a kind of cool texture in it and so like like I said going to kind of scavenger if you've got a garage and you've got Maybe some, uh, I don't know, leftover things around. Um, tools and nuts and bolts and things like that. You could put together some things you might try out to be creative with. Um, it would be good to have a, a little spray bottle with some water. This is just a, an old uh, um, a clean shower bottle and there's just water in it now. And we use that to mist down our pieces. If you want to keep on working on pieces for a while, having a grocery bag would be good, um, or several of them. And you could wrap your pieces up with plastic, keep them from drying. Um, one thing I like to do if I'm, if I'm really worried about it drying out, I'll spritz a little water inside the bag and wrap the piece up in it, and it, it keeps it from drying out. Um, if you have some drill bits around, there's some uh, uses for drill bits uh, where you can get a nice clean hole or even nice clean divots where you could make some divot textures, you know, just with the point of the drill, not going all the way through. Or you could make holes like a lantern type device um, where you, said you put a candle in there and uh, light would come through the holes and that could be kind of neat. Um, they're really easy to make nice drilled holes through uh, leather hard clay. Um, just with your hand and twisting the drill bit through. Um, you just hold it and, and twist and go right through the clay. You don't need a drill itself, but the bits sure are nice. Uh, let's see what else I have here. I got some rope. You know, this could be rolled or pressed in the clay to give you some interesting textures. Um, those of you who have been in my studio know we've used some of these um, flowers that are uh, cut out from um, like lace and um, tablecloths and things like that and these came from a, a local artist who, who donated a whole bunch of her supplies when she retired she gave them to us her name is Miro hi Miro <laughs> um, and we have a bunch of her flowers here we, we like to put those down roll those into the clay and then peel them out um, you can even use leaves now that we're getting green leaves outside and things are popping here in Virginia Beach um, it was 80 degrees just the other day and in March, which uh, we had a very mild winter. So um, things are really taking off. Spring's really taking off here. You can get green leaves, which are nice and flexible, and they have uh, fine ones with good veining in them. You could roll those into your clay and peel them right out um, to get textures. Um, being by the beach, we also have the sea. and You might go take a walk on the beach, stay away from everybody else, but sometimes we need a little time uh, away outside and uh, get a breath of fresh air and you can find some shells possibly. I like the scallop shells like this. They have a lot of texture. You can use those and press those into clay. Um, other things, uh, I'm not sure what kind of cloth this is, um, but it's just one we have around the studio. It has a lot of texture to it. We could roll that into clay. This is a placemat um, that's kind of neat. And what I like about it, it has a circular pattern and it almost looks like a fingerprint. Um, when uh, it's rolled into clay. And I'll use that for a demonstration in an upcoming video maybe. Uh, let you see how that works. Let's see, you might want to have a um, tub for some water and um, to put things together, it would be good to have a paintbrush and a little water. If it's got a lid, then it doesn't dry out on you all the time. And I like to actually make slip so that I'm um, putting things together with slip and not just water. Um, and what I like is just like ground up clay, little shavings. You take a little bit of your clay, shave it off, um, wait till it dries, you know, break it up into powders almost. Um, not quite powder, but little granules. 
add that to your water and uh, almost instantly you're going to have some good slip that you can use for joining your pieces together. Um, and so I'm just going to leave that there. But you can also keep it if you have a lid. You can keep it from drying out and use it, you know, from day to day. Um, I don't expect you to do all your projects in one day. Um, I'm going to be feeding them to you a little by little so that each week you have something new to work on on your own. And then um, my students, they can then email me pictures um, of what they've been making at home. But having a, a paintbrush, an old paintbrush is good to apply the slip with. Um, and it just takes a few minutes for this to work into the slip. Once it's dry, if you just add dry clay to water it, and it's all ground down into little granules, it's almost instant slip. So it works really good for us. Um, some other things you might need, have a cup of coffee. Um, stop, take a break, have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax. And let's see, some other tools that I have, you probably won't have. They're nice to have, um, and I'll share them because I'll be using them in upcoming videos. I use them a potter's wheel. Um, I know you won't have a potter's wheel, well, not all my students. Most of my students won't have a potter's wheel at home, but some of you in YouTube land um, might have a potter's wheel at home. So um, I like these Cheryl mud tools. Um, they work really good. You can get them off the internet and they have different flexibilities. The stiffer one is, that I have is this green and then this is a little bit softer, the yellow, and then the red. The red is buttery soft. It's really nice, flexible. Um, my favorite though, I think I use the yellow the most, um, a sure form rasp is nice to have. It leaves a nice texture, but also um, you can remove excess clay really quick and shape. Uh, really do a lot with a sure form rasp. This is a Harbor Freight version, I believe, this red one. Um, they also make other ones that you can buy at uh, Home Depot, home stores like that. Um, I like these with the handle on them, they, they just work really good for me. Maybe uh, for my clay sculpture students, um, you know, anything that you can find here would be good. But if you had some modeling tools, that'd be awesome. If not, you know, think about what, you know, basically these are. This is just like a kitchen knife, the shape of one. Um, and so is that one. And, uh, you know, you can improvise different things and just be creative. I found this inside a bucket of tools around the studio. Had a neat texture in it. Um, and then this rounded end, I, you know, we could use that for something. Um, I have this little scoring tool, which uh, looks like a needle tool handle, but it has a bunch of wires sticking out. And I might be using that in some of my demonstrations. They're really fun to have for scoring really quickly. They work really nice. And some different um, loop tools are good for carving um, and relieving the surface. And uh, I do intend to do a, a project where uh, students can make some um, pinched, you know, kind of thick pinched uh, cups and carve them, put handles on them and make maybe like a, a cup set um, while they're doing this at home. So um, I think uh, I think that's about all I have here uh, to get started. Um, so, you know, go on your scavenger hunt first. Uh, maybe put together your toolkit. Don't panic if you don't have something. Um, if my students, if you don't uh, have clay, you need to email me and let me know um, so maybe I can help you get some um, and help you track that down or if you live locally, set up a time where you could come and get some and uh, we'll work this out. You know, we'll do the best we can with the situation we've been dealt. I hope everybody out there is staying safe and healthy. Um, it's a tough time for all of us and we're going to get through it. We're all going to get through it. So uh, hang in there and uh, I'll, please come back. Look at my other videos as I make them. They're going to be a lot of fun. Um, so I'm about ready to start to do one just now. Let me cut off this camera and uh, get set up.